Hello, I'm Jeremiah, one of the trustees at the Kurt Geiger Kindness Foundation. Welcome to Inspiration Sessions, where we interview some of the industry's finest. This is all around the Business by Design program, a free learning program for 18 to 20 year olds who are trying to break into the creative industry. And I'm joined by the one, the only, <laughs> the CEO of Kurt Geiger. Neil, thank you so much for coming down today. You're Your welcome. Busy, busy, busy. No, schedule. no, no. This is the most important thing I'll do this week. Appreciate it. So how have you been? I'm good. Super excited about Business by Design. It's one of my big dreams. So it's, it's really cool. So where I wanted to sort of start is, who are you as a person, Neil? I think a lot of the time when we ask people who they are, it's sort of immediately, I do this, I do this, I do this. But like, who are you as an individual? Oh, who am I? That's a really tough question. I'm, I'm a co like us all, I think, quite a complicated character. I, I struggled at school. I'm dyslexic. I didn't really realise that till my son was diagnosed. But actually, dyslexia is a superpower, I've now realised. So I always I struggled through school. I had lots of friends and no qualifications. And that really, I think, was the cement and the energy about my career that developed on from that. So yeah. um, I have a lot of ambition, enthusiasm, tenacity, energy. I think a little bit of ADHD sprinkled in there, <laughs> which is always helpful too, I think, because yeah. you, you, know, you, you never give up. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I really want you to sort of talk to us about what your role entails as a CEO. Mm. Because I think for me myself, you know, when I think about the title CEO, you know, it's like the big cheese at the top of the company who runs the shop. But at the end of the day, like, what do you actually do on a sort of like day-to-day -day basis? The Grand Fromage. <laughs> um, the funny thing about being a CEO is you don't actually do anything yourself. You do it through people. So the, the higher up, and I started at the bottom as a store manager. You know, we're in our lovely shop on Oxford Street now. It's where I started. As you move up <clears throat> your career, managing and motivating and looking after people becomes more and more important the higher you get up because the less actual work you do yourself, but the more work you have to motivate and communicate and develop and manage other people. So. I nudge people along in all of the functions. And what's also good about being a CEO is you don't have to be an expert at one thing, because mm. I'm not, but I'm really okay at lots of little things. So I think, I like to think I was always made to be a CEO. And actually I'm better at being a CEO than I probably was a store manager, <laughs> really. So it's a funny, it's a funny mix. You do it through other people. So essentially what you're describing there is leadership. And something that was super interesting about what you said is you actually came to Kurt Geiger, um, you know, at a store manager level. Yeah. And you climbed the ranks all the way to the CEO of the company. Can you tell us a bit more about that journey? Well, I think when everyone meets the CEO, they always think, oh, my God, that guy must have gone to an amazing university. He's got amazing qualifications. He's really good at, I don't know, maths or finance. But that's not the case. I came up through, um, yeah, through the ranks. I was a store manager. In fact, lower than that. I was a suit salesman when I left school. Oh, wow. I, I, well, actually, I delivered gas bottles. Um, you know, my, my first job was in a little hardware store. And wow. then, I, then I, I realized that dyslexia meant that you were quite good with people because you don't look down much because you don't like reading. Yeah, yeah. So you're good with people because you've always got your head lifted up and you're talking to people. So I was good at selling things. And that's really where my career started. And I loved being a shop manager because I was in charge. I could do the visual merchandising. I could communicate to the teams. I could open the shop later if I wanted. I was never afraid of being the boss. Yeah. I was never scared of responsibility. 
I always wanted to be the boss, to be honest. I didn't really, and I still don't really like being the boss. Yeah. But I'm happy with that pressure. Um, so that's really where I came from. And I just dragged myself up the ladder with a lot of people's help. Amazing. And, you know, I've been a friend of Kurt Geiger for about two or three years. You have. Maybe a little bit longer, actually. Mm. Um, and one thing I'll say as a brand, you guys definitely stand out. And I mean, you sort of stand out in terms of purpose, in terms of giving back, in terms of making an impact in the world around you. Why have you sort of embodied that culture at the heart of the company? Well, a couple of things. One, the pandemic was a, was a bad time for the company, probably for all human beings and companies, it was a bad time. We always tried to be a decent company before then, but the pandemic really motivated us that we needed to do more good. You know, we needed to help more people. We gave away hundreds of thousands of pairs of shoes and handbags to, I think, 100,000 employees of the NHS through 2019 oh, wow. and 20. And that brought together a real amazing feeling in the company that it's okay to be commercial and grow and make more profits, but actually you can do it in a modern way and help communities along the way. And then we partnered with uh, a wonderful company, IG Partners, to create the, um, formalize that into a charity, which we did with the Kurt Geiger Foundation. You were a very important part of that <laughs> too, <laughs> Jeremiah. And then post the creation of our charity, we said, how do we make more direct impact? How do we make help young people? We were all young once, right? I still feel young, actually. I might have a grey beard, but I still <laughs> no, feel, you are I still feel the same as when I was 25. And Don't worry, uh, the swag is there. But I, Yeah, exactly. I try, <laughs> I, try to, I try to do that. But we felt that it was just a really cool thing to help young people. And creativity is a big part of our company. And I think sometimes maybe the education structure doesn't help creative people enough, the right-brained people. You know, and we're world champions as that as a country, aren't we? Music, yeah. architecture, design, fashion. And we're an important part of that as Kurt Geiger is a creative company. So we wanted to help some young people get into that. You know, we've all can name the young, the, the one person that has helped us. I'm yeah. sure you can, yeah. I can. And we want to be the one person to a few people. That's hence the creation of Business by Design. I think my question is why, you know, Business by Design is being put together again, this amazing learning program, but to anyone from the outside looking in, you know, or any other CEOs, people are in positions of power, people have brands, you know, it's, it's a business at the end of the day. Yep. So why has it been important for you to actually, you know, go, let's set up a foundation, let's fund all of these organizations let's create a learning program because realistically you you don't have to do it so why what what exactly is driving you well there's a, there's a few com complicated things there one i think it makes our company better i think it makes our brand stand out we like to be disruptive in how we design handbags and shoes and we want to therefore be disruptive in other things we do. And we think that's, that's, that's cool. We also think that wouldn't it be wonderful that our employees in the future came through our Business by Design Academy because it would make us, I think, have better employees or develop our employees to be more loyal and we'd get a, a, a nicer mix of cultures in the company, points of view. So there's, there's many reasons, really. I also think, I don't think companies now, and a lot of companies do wonderful things. I'm not trying to make out that we're some sort of unique company because we're not, but I think you have, to, you have to do good as well. I don't think it's enough just buying and selling things and making profits. You have to, your consumers expect it, really, for you to be a decent company. So there's lots of reasons why. Actually, it's a really scary thing. Yeah. We can do this. This is our day job, opening stores, designing handbags, designing yeah. wonderful shoes, advertising campaigns, creating an educational academy 
is probably the scariest thing that we've ever embarked on because it's not in our it's not in our natural skill set right yeah. so we've had to go out and recruit wonderful people to help us do that so it is the scariest thing we've ever done but hopefully one of the best things we've ever done one million percent and with that being said i want you to visualize 12 months into the future business by design has launched yep. you've gone through the program what would make the last 12 months a success it will be successful. It will. I've, I've, um, that's another one of my skills that I have, I have no doubts about what we can achieve, right? And it's just the beginning. Things are endless, you know, whether it be designing a handbag or shoes or shops, you know, there's never an end. That's what I love about my job. You're never done, you're never finished. I think what would make me the happiest is, with, and we're going to do this because it's part of what we've agreed to do, is employ two or three people two or three of those amazing young people and give them a full-time job at Kurt Geiger and help them really start their career with us. That would not what would make me the happiest. And we're going to do that. So I'm, I'm, that's, not a, that's not an if. So thinking into your career, what have been some of the highlights, the most memorable moments you would say? Well, I love the fact that you said so far, actually, because um, even though I'm in my 50s, I have no anxiety or no motivation to ever stop, right? A um, few highlights, I think. Um, actually, one was two weeks ago opening this lovely store on Oxford Street. So that's, that's, and I like to look in the future as opposed to looking in the rear view mirror in general. But if I have to go back, we bought the company on July 4th, 2005, Independence Day. So that, yeah. was, that was a big moment. Um, remortgaging my house, borrowing a load of money. That was quite scary, but quite yeah. cool. We're opening stores in America next year. So I'm excited about that. I know that's the future, not the past. I'm yeah. flying to Mexico this week to open a store oh, wow. in Mexico. Wow. How amazing is that? Um, so I think more about the future maybe than I'm good at looking back, you know, I'm, I'm a bit like driving you need to look forward in the car not in the rear view mirror because you'll yeah. probably crash if you keep looking back so i'm a looking forward guy what would you say you know I, I think it's important to talk about this but what would you say a really sort of like low point mm. has been during your career so far the pandemic I think we'd all say that, wouldn't we? Professionally, personally, that was a very dark time. The company was, you know, technically bankrupt because the stores weren't open. Yeah. But, you know, out of that bad came really good because we're like, hey, we're going to go down in flames. If we're finished, we're going to go down with big memories. And that's when we started gifting for every hospital where we had a store in the UK, which was 75 hospitals, we were giving away hundreds and hundreds of gift cards to frontline workers. And that really was the catalyst of the foundation. So in a way, even though that was a very dark time for the company, it's made us a better company now looking back. So that's it's cool, right? In the yeah, that's cool, yeah. So Neil, you know, you've spoken about you being a CEO, maybe not being a traditional CEO, what advice would you give to young people who feel like there aren't enough opportunities, who really want to sort of break into the creative industry? Um, what advice can you sort of give them as like one piece of advice in terms of achieving their goals and their dreams? Well, I'd, I'd, I'd say lots of things. Um, have dreams, dream big write your dreams down look at them every day i was always that guy even though i'm dyslexic and don't read much i was always writing i was always thinking about what i wanted to be i didn't know how to be successful when i left school with one o level in art i knew i sort of would be somehow but i didn't know how to do that so write your dreams down um, Join our academy, of course. Come and join if you can, because we're willing to help you. Get up early, write lists, be kind to people. I think being kind is, is a good thing. Help people whenever you can. That's a, that's a, 
sounds a bit fluffy, but I think that's also part of our company thing that, you know, if you can help others, do that. And just start. I suppose the scary thing is always starting something, isn't it? You're always more worried about doing something before you start, once you get going, whether that be education, whether it be your first job. Always make your boss look great as well. You know, when I was a suit salesman in 1985 in Debenham, Southsea, right? Right at the beginning. I always just wanted my boss to be really successful. I wanted us to do the budgets. I wanted so. So always do a good job for your boss and your boss will look after you. But I, could, I, can, I can give you... And read the financial papers. Again, it wasn't... School was tough for me. I had lots of friends but failed everything. I wasn't good at maths. My teachers told me I was, you know, was a bit stupid or whatever. When I got a job, I realised I wasn't stupid. I realised that I actually understood maths when it came to my salary or my commissions or my, you know, yeah. maths suddenly made sense when you had a job. And I started reading, sounds a bit cheesy, but I started reading the Financial Times, maybe just half a page or yeah. one page every day. And you learn stuff. Um, so learning, always think, every day is a school day, you know, I'm still learning now, yeah, every day, yeah, keep learning, yeah, learning, yeah, yeah, incredible, well, Neil, thank you so much for joining us today, thank you very much to being part of this, Jeremiah, we wouldn't have done it without you, honestly, so it's really super, super to have you part of our journey, thank you, Neil, honestly, I really appreciate it, and again, just super thrilled, um, that the business bike design program is launching. So again, for anyone watching who may be interested, make sure you go to the website to find out some more information and apply.